if last night's Super Bowl left you a little deprived of excitement, then we might have the prescription for you. Hello and welcome to Sports Talk. I'm Tyler Sloan, the man who two years in a row correctly predicted on Sports Talk the winner of the Super Bowl. Thank you, Seattle. We have a large dose of boys soccer on today's show. All three head coaches will be here to talk about their non-district play and preview of district games now only a week away. All three teams made the playoffs last season. What are the chances of making that happen again in 2014? You know what to do. Stay right here. It's about to get footy on Sports Talk. this year it's been good results for the McKinney Lions they're off to another winning record trying to come back in district play which is coming up next they finished runners up in the district last year trying to win that district this year in 10 5 a.m. joined by their head coach Alan Pocock and coach another great year off to a great start for your team we're going to go ahead and backtrack first to last year where it was a good playoff run you had three straight playoff wins and then you have a draw in, in regular time against Humble Keenwood. You lose in a shootout. Take us kind of through you know that playoff stretch for your team last year. Well, it, it was uh, such an amazing year to uh, to begin with kind of our humble um, uh, expectations, uh, and it seemed like no matter what we'd accomplish um, in pre district, there was just still this uh, sword hanging over our head, like hey, ten five A is coming up. Um, not that we had never played in 5A before, but um, you know, despite um, finishing as district champ or runner-up um, every season um, beginning with 2005, and uh, you know, multiple runs, four rounds deep in the playoffs, there's st still this uh, stigma of, oh, that, well, they're just a 4A school. And I mean, actually, last year we were a 4A-sized school competing in that monster 10-5A right. district. And to be, you know, just a, a away game against Boyd, you know, last two minutes away from actually um, tying for a district championship and winning head-to-head, -head, um, that, you know, just shocked everyone, um, including ourselves probably. But, um, you know, the, the, I just give so much credit to that uh, special senior group last year that uh, accomplished that uh, district runner-up um, over some of those massive, uh, not just size-wise schools, but with soccer history, um, you know, state tournaments, um, Final Four appearances, and uh, um, show that we definitely uh, belonged in playoffs with a trip to Round Rock for the, uh, the regional tournament. That was a big hump to get over. Um, uh, getting back, you know, we hadn't been to the regional tournament since 2000 when we were a uh, uh, 5A regional runner-up that year, um, just a game away from state. But uh, that group, their expectations just grew every week and uh, really miss um, a lot of uh, what that group contributed. So I had to regroup and replace uh, both goalkeepers, um, every defender but one, um, every midfielder, and really um, uh, only had uh, a couple of our forwards and then uh, Andres Garza as our returning varsity players that had a significant uh, impact, significant minutes last year in that run. But, you know, even a, even a handful of guys with that kind of experience, they they're, um, can kind of positively infect a, a group. It's infectious uh, with a group that, uh, you know, JV players that either went with us for, for the playoff run or simply watched that whole season progress. They come in with this, you know, hey, w um, because of who we are and um, our legacy, doesn't matter what you throw at us, even if it's almost an entirely new varsity roster this year, the expectation is to, to get to playoffs. And uh, Do you think that group maybe came in this year with a little bit of a chip on their shoulders, considering, you know, last year in the playoff run, you never gave up a single goal in regulation. It's only the shootout goals that you lost by, and you lost by one in the shootout. Did they have a little chip on their shoulder knowing that, you know, they may be, you know, they were that close to getting to a regional final against a boy team that you'd already beaten in the season and could have gone back to state? Uh, 
Certainly, the, the the guys that were a part of that uh, that playoff run that are back this year um, wanted to pound that into everyone's mind. That, yeah, we want to get back there. Uh, from you know my own kind of coach's perspective, I always, I guess, try to keep the dream alive, but also be realistic and keep perspective. Um, you know. Uh, Guys, let's first lock in on have, let's have a winning record going in the district. That's right. our first goal, um, and then let's qualify for playoffs. And if we're fortunate enough, having a, a, a great run, then let's see if we can wrap up a district championship and then take one game at a time when you get to uh, to playoffs. But um, you know, each season has a little bit different flavor of players, and uh, same thing this year. I really wasn't sure. You know, we <laughs> have. First semester, a lot of success in, in building our lineup, so to speak, um, almost from scratch during uh, during practices against JV and against ourselves. But just nothing really um, is like actually going up against another opponent, uh, even if it's scrimmages like we had against Frisco and Wiley, um, and wanted to see, okay, you know, what are we going to be like lining up against? I thought we probably had the toughest group in the Frisco tournament um, to try to uh, advance out of. Um, you know, playing a real tough, physical, rugged, um, fit, and uh, tactically sound Mount Pleasant team. Um, of course, you know, not to take anything away from W.T. White, um, that was just a one goal, a 1 0 win that. Um, uh, got to see a lot of the style of play that we would see throughout the the, uh, the tournament, um, and then to square off right away the next day with Poteet, who, in, in my 23 years at McKinney, I'd never beaten. Um, <laughs> been, uh, and I had that Poteet group last oh, year in the playoffs. Yeah. I called a couple of their mm-hmm. playoff games, including their semifinal loss in the state tournament to yeah. the eventual champs, Waco University. Right. So they right. have a quality group oh, there. Oh yeah, I, and the boys were really up for that. The team was, I was up for it. I think we both kind of fed off each other and I, I said, guys, I'd personally would really love to get this Poteet monkey off my back. You know, they're the number one ranked team in the state right now, uh, just coming off a Final Four appearance last year. Um, so let's see what you got. And I mean, the 2-0 finish that we had in that game really was not indicative of how well the boys dominated offensively. It could have been 4-5. Uh, but, you know, Poteet was playing without uh, some players due to injury, like we were going to be forced to the, the next weekend and have a totally you know black and white as far as results um, weekend. Um, and, and then Mount Pleasant 2-2 um, and uh, advanced to the silver championship game um, with that uh, trophy championship win against Frisco. Um, and just you know validated a lot to our, ourselves and to the boys about, okay, things are paying off um, all, our, all our work for these previous months. So um, yeah, you let's certainly see, see that in those opening results in that Briscoe tournament. You have six wins, one draw, and three losses so far in the season. Just came off of a fantastic win at home against McKinney mm-hmm. North. It kept your four years yeah. now running home win streak alive, and you get a nail-biting two-one victory. And, and the last ten minutes is when all the scoring in that game happened. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter uh, what your records are, what the standings are in district, or. Playoff, not playoff, scrimmage, real game or not. When you've got those crosstown games, or in in my experience with uh, with Boyd and North, it's a playoff atmosphere. And uh, boy, my hat's off to North. They're, the fans they brought. I know it was you know partially their sub varsity teams and also their fans. I mean, it was loud. I, I can't remember the last time it was that loud. Um, trying to get instructions onto the field. Um, I was really impressed uh, with, with how they traveled. Uh, I know it's not very far to travel, but it was just a great atmosphere to the game. And uh, 0-0 at half, um, had some great opportunities. Uh, both sides did. Uh, we were playing without one of our, uh, our key defenders um, who we'd had um, uh, every game up until um, Friday night, who was out with an injury. So, you know, kind of some tinkering with that, like we were forced to do the previous weekend in the Little Elm tournament. But um, got everyone back on the field um, that we had started the, the season with, except for one, and um, liked what we were doing. Real, real pleased um, responding to kind of the stress and uh, um, electricity of the atmosphere. But uh, yeah, there's kind of that pressure on you of, wow, four years without a loss at home. And uh, you know, uh, 
21, one and two record against North. Uh, hadn't lost to them since 06, and then bam, eight minutes left in the game, give up an own goal on a cross. And uh, um, the boys collected themselves very quickly. I was really impressed how they responded. Um, it's kind of where you find out where yeah. your team is at, if they can yeah. respond to those great situations. To have a, great to have a moment like that this early in the season um, that resulted, you know, immediately a tying goal, David Soto, um, uh, just a minute after that. And then uh, two minutes after that, uh, Tim Garcia with a, a rocket of a free kick, a uh, game-winning goal. Um, that, was, uh, that was really exciting. I mean, uh, it... Uh, it, uh, things, it was good to see that uh, result and what led to that sink into the boys. Yeah. Let's briefly talk about the roster that you have this mm -hmm. year. Obviously, you have a, a new goalkeeping mm -hmm. situation. You, you played two goalkeepers mm -hmm. last year, and you lost mm -hmm. both of them. And then mm -hmm. the, you know, completely having to restructure mm -hmm. the back minus you know, Andres Gar Garza. Yeah. And then up front, you still have David Soda and Arsha Kalilian, mm -hmm. who, who have been pretty good. They've been scoring goals, obviously, this year mm -hmm. so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that um, you know possibly if I had ret returned even one of our goalkeepers from last year, that I uh, I would have been um, playing Andres more in our attack um, with Jason um, at, at Jason Horvath at center mid um, and have our two captains at center mid, and that's actually what we did the whole first semester. Um, but I, I wanted to kind of uh, experiment with having Andres' present in back, presence in back as kind of a calming, structuring, and give some real tactical confidence um, out of the back um, because of first-year varsity goalkeepers um, getting adjusted, uh, acclimated to their role. Um, and then also um, kind of go back to what I liked seeing um, the whole first semester with he and Jason in the middle. But as, uh, as the, this month, uh, this opening month progressed, um, it was good to see um, junior um, Josh McAllister uh, emerge as uh, the center mid that um, played off of Jason very well at center mid. Um, I mean, and actually, um, Tony Contreras and Edgar Ramirez have also got some minutes in there where I know that we've got some good depth um, available if anything should strike, uh, knock on wood. Yeah. Um, like, uh, I mean, every team's been battling with flu bug um, and, and injuries, so um, everyone's had to experiment and so ha had their had their kind of their games that are just like, well, okay, looks like this is going to be a great chance to see our depth um, and see where our uh, how competitive our bench can be. Um, and it was good to see that last weekend. Last thing uh, I want to ask you is coming up into district play. You know, last year you finished runners up. You had a, a lot of draws early in that district slate before you went on the winning streak towards the end. What are your sort of expectations for the guys and, and what you want to see them accomplish in district this year? Well, to, kind of twofold or two double sided. Um, on the one side, um, we're in essence starting from scratch in a lot of positions and really possibly having the same mindset going in there. Guys, we've got to at least tie on the road and win at home uh, if we're going to make it to, to playoffs. Um, on the other hand, you, you're really tempted to up your expectations because, hey, look what we did last year. We proved to ourselves that we can you know, not just compete but excel in this district. Um, you know, other teams have been – it seemed like everybody in our district had an awful um, last weekend. Um, uh, you know, losing uh, three, four games in a row um, in the span of the last seven days. Um, so it seems like everybody this week is going to regroup, get their heads screwed on tight. We got Wiley um, tomorrow night uh, for our last pre-district game at home, um, and then uh, go scout uh, if we can on Friday night or just a, a bye night and, and then district kick off. District play Tuesday. begins. Well, Coach Pocock, thanks again for joining us. I really appreciate your time as always. Thanks very much. Kenny Lyons off to a six, three, and one start, and they'll open up district play in a week. They have Wiley coming up next. So far, a good start to the Lions with a new young group coming in.